It is lockdown where I live and there's nothing to do. So as a means of distraction from the fact that I have no redeeming qualities, I'm gonna take on the hardest coding challenge I could think of, an entire 3D physics engine. I haven't done 3D physics, but I've made another library before. In my earlier videos, I got a lot of comments asking me how I made the animations. And the answer is actually, I spent months and months writing my own graphics library. Basically, I looked at 3 blue, 1 browns animation library and thought, you know, I could probably do it better. That was a waste of time, but I'm bored, so let's do it again. Gonki, I hear you asking, what is this physics engine gonna include? Well, my friend, if I just... We're gonna do all the exciting simulations known to man. Soft body simulations, Check. I'm gonna start with soft bodies, in fact. I think it's probably the easiest one. Fluid sims? You bet we're gonna have- I- I don't know what happened to the resolution of the image. Cloth simulations, rigid bodies, you name it. I'm just gonna try to make this into one big sandbox with everything available. I actually have no idea how to do these things, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Now, it's really important that I pick the right programming language, so for this project, I'm gonna go with Microsoft Visual Ba- No! God, please, no! I'm gonna use C Sharp and OpenGL. I've never used C Sharp before, and I haven't done anything 3D in OpenGL. So here's an epic montage showing how I learned all of C Sharp and OpenGL. So, it is now two weeks later, I've probably lost like five years off of my lifespan, but at least we've got something drawing on the screen. The code is terrible, the performance is garbage, and it looks like trash, but we can use the excuse that those things are not the priority. The priority is, of course, to make a soft body. We need to make a sphere, but how? Allow me to introduce you to the wondrous world of sphere meshes. First, we have the UV sphere. Pretty standard, you know, your average globe looks like this with the longitude and latitude, but this has some problems. The points are really uneven with lots of vertices on the top and bottom, but not many in the middle. It also has a bunch of quadrilaterals and computers don't like quadrilaterals. They like triangles. Next, there is the subdivided cube. Oh, you have a cube? Just cut it smaller and smaller again and smaller again and then make it round. The vertices are more evenly distributed than in a UV sphere, but it's still a bit uneven. And all the faces are quadrilaterals. Oh, this is terrible. Where are the triangles at? But fear not. We got the best type of sphere coming up, the icosphere. It's all triangles and it's completely symmetrical with all the vertices being distributed so evenly, you can't even tell which way is up. If that's not the perfect sphere, I don't know what is. So let's make it now. After some research, I actually now fully understand the algorithm to generate one of these guys. And by understand, I mean I found a GitHub page with code that I can copy. Look at that! Now, is it just me, or is that sphere looking kind of thick? FBI, open up! Don't steal my line, scrub. My bad. But yeah, let's finally start to do some physics, starting with collision. So let's leave collision for later. We just need the ball to bounce and that only requires a floor. We can do that using one float. Yeah, that'll do. So now with that out of the way, let's get to the important stuff. What makes a ball a ball? Essentially, there has to be a force that pushes the ball out and a force that pulls the ball in. So let's open our favorite high school physics book and see if there's anything useful. Oh, I found something. We can make what's known as a spring mass system using Hooke's law, where the force of a spring is equal to negative displacement times spring constant. So let's just connect each point on the ball with a spring, and then that'll make each edge maintain its original length and stop it from exploding. Hold on, what's that high school physics book? Oh my God, Newton says force equals mass times acceleration. All right, let's give a mass to each point on the ball. If it heavy, it move less. If it light, it move more. Hey, so we got something to hold the ball together, but now it's just flopping around on the ground like it's looking for the meaning of life. So what will we use to inflate it? Oh, glorious high school physics textbook. 
I found another useful discovery. Ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. NRT, those three things don't matter. So let's just put it into one constant value. But we can now just look at the volume of the ball and pressurize it accordingly. The pressure in the ball equals that constant value, NRT, divided by volume. So how do we convert that into a force? Pressure equals force divided by area. From the book, of course. So we just equate them two things and boom. Just go through all the triangles on the ball, calculate the area of each triangle, and apply force that's proportional to that area, pushing out the points in the direction of its normal. Hey, it's bouncy now. I make it sound so easy, but this took days to implement. If I were to cover all the wisdom that I've gained learning to do this and all the pain and suffering, this video would be two hours long. So I know what you're thinking. Gonky, is the code on GitHub? What a great question. Yes, it is. And it's called geep 3 d for Gonky's epic physics engine, obviously. The link's in the description. So please go have a look at my code and help me fix that shit. Because look at all these issues I'm having. If I just change some of the values, then hey, 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 yo, what's going on here? Why is it exploding? I had to research this, but it turns out it has to do with the acceleration, velocity, and position. Right now, we just multiply acceleration by time and add it to velocity, and then multiply velocity by time and add it to position. This is called the explicit Euler method, and everyone who's ever made a video game has probably done this a million times, so it should be fine, right? Wrong. It's the most basic method and it's for dummy. Sorry, I rephrase. It turns out the accuracy of this Euler method is a bit garbage, especially, especially for the spring mass system. We need something else. Introducing Runga Kuta 4, which is now in big boy territory because while all the normie game devs know about the Euler one, all the physics devs know about Runga Kuta 4. So cultured. That was another painful idea to implement. Half my code went in the trash and I had to redo everything. But hey, now we can make bouncy balls with bigger values and they work just fine. Finally, we can scale the project to be as large as we want. I can't do it, guys. My brain is not big enough. We'll just have to leave it like that, as jank as it is, to move on to collision detection. Collision was every bit as painful as it sounds, so I'm just gonna put a massive time lapse here in an effort to share my experience of suffering with you. You know, as a community, perhaps the thing that unites us is the universal post-traumatic stress disorder we acquire from browsing too much Stack Overflow. Hopefully some university professor can stumble upon my GitHub page and magically help me fix everything. All right, now is the moment of truth, everybody. What we've all been waiting for. Look at this, 300 lines of blood, sweat, and tears. All right, uh, as you can see, there's a few gaps for the soft body to get through. It's taking its swell time right now. I really hope it doesn't explode on the way. And it is about to clear the first gap, as you can see. All right, take your time, no rush. Just hold it together, don't, please don't explode. Stay calm. Okay, we're almost there. Oh, I don't look, I don't like the look of that. Oh, it is in bad shape right now. That's not, that is not good. That's definitely not good. Just, it is one more gap, just hold it, hold it together, it's one. Come on. I, uh, that's it. Take it or leave it. I don't know. I'm not big brain enough to figure out what's wrong with that. It took me a while to figure out a set of values that actually allows it to get through that semi intact. Damn, it is tragic how bad the code is right now. All right, you know what? Just subscribe to my channel. I'm going to fix it in the next video. I don't know. Maybe make a fluid sim while we're at it.